Good morning, it is Phil to the Brim, and it is Friday, November 15th, and we're running th towards Thanksgiving, aren't we? So, what a beautiful time of the year. May we truly be thankful, always, for what the Lord has given to us, and let us show our thankfulness through our submission to the Lord, through our obedience to the Lord. I am talking about the challenge of blessing. And I'm going to say in the Western world, in our world in the U.S., where I live, there is the challenge of blessing in that we can be tempted to run after things, serve the blessing rather than the one who has blessed us. This has always been a human, fallen human a default mechanism. And I, as a pastor, have seen this many times in the lives of people where they've lost their passion to serve God, to obey God, to make Him first in their life. And they're running after so many other things. They may say God is first, but their actions uh, and attitudes and priorities say differently. I want to challenge us not to fall into the false doctrine of choosing the lust of our flesh and the lust of our eyes and the pride of life as if it's okay because it's not okay. And scripture tells us it's not okay. That's what 1 John 2.16 says. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father but of the world. Eve chose the lust of the flesh, which cho then brought her into the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. I see it happen even among children of God in 2024. In the Old Testament, I talked about yesterday how Joshua commanded the people to serve the Lord. And as they went into their portion, into their place of blessing, that they were to continue to defeat the giants rather than to serve those giants or to partner with the gods of this world. And Joshua said, but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We've got to be intentional about serving the Lord. And particularly in the seasons of blessing or in the status of blessing, because we don't have the storms that are pushing us towards finding Jesus. And, and so therefore we have to be uh, saying that causing our will freely, willfully, in the sense of, in the best sense of self-control, choosing to obey God, choosing God's ways, choosing to raise your children God's way, choosing to have a marriage that's God's way, choosing to use your finances God's way, choosing to use your time God's way, choosing to use your talents God's way, choosing your mindset, saying my mindset will be in submission to the ways of God, not the ways of this world. Not reaching for the powers of this world, but walking by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're talking about. The challenge of blessing is remaining submitted to God, surrendered to God, and not reaching for the powers of your flesh, powers of this world. Talked about the Old Testament. I want to move on with the example of David. David is one of my favorite people in scripture because he is loves God, but he's so imperfect. And God interacts with David in a really intimate way. And David uh, also has these challenges that I speak about in 1 John 2.16, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And the Lord addresses this in David. Now, David was chosen by God. He was anointed by God to be the king over Israel. He had a heart after God. We know this about him in scripture. And after he finally becomes the king, he wants to bring back the Ark of the Covenant and bring it to Jerusalem, the seat of power for Israel now that he has chosen. And this is extremely significant portion of scripture in 2 Samuel 6, 6 through 8. But let me say this. That the Lord deals with David's uh, lust of the flesh in this first scripture when he is initially bringing back the Ark of the Covenant, but he does it his way. So God is confronting, the Father is confronting, the Holy Spirit is confronting David right from the beginning as a new king. Let me read this to you, the 2 Samuel 6, 6 through 8, when he initially brings or is trying to bring the Ark of the Covenant back or to Jerusalem. 
David again brought together all the able young men of Israel. So there's a bunch of young men, you know, along with David. And David's fairly young still. He brings 30,000 young men. He and all his men went to Bala and Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim on the ark. They set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill of, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahil, sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it, and Ahil was walking in front of it. David and all of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord with castanets, harps, lyres, timbrels, sistrums, and cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nikon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of this irreverent act. Therefore God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. And to this day that place is called Perez Uzzah. I want to say this. David is actually functioning in his flesh. Because he has chosen not to follow the law of Moses in the way he's bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. He knows the covenant. He knows uh, Moses' law. He, uh, he knows it. And yet he brings the Ark of the Covenant on a cart like the Philistines had placed the Ark of the Covenant on a cart when they were returning the cart after capturing it. So David is doing that, number one. Number two, there's a bunch of young men. Uh, worshiping and celebrating and they're having like this big rally and he has chosen people to take care of the Ark of the Covenant that were not Levites, not purified before the Lord. He is doing it his own way. He is choosing to uh, disrespect in a sense the ways of God. He is not dancing with no linen ephod at this point. He is in his robes. He is doing his own thing and God confronts it. He, David is actually functioning in the flesh, in the choosing of his own fleshly ways. And he is, he also is irreverent to the ways of God and God takes care of this. It's interesting in the scripture is that when does Uzzah die? He dies when the ark is gets to the place of the threshing floor. It is very significant that uh, Uzzah reaches up to try to keep the ark from falling, which is on this cart, at the threshing floor because I've talked about the threshing floor many times. The threshing floor in scripture is a place of purification. It's a place where the, the wheat was purified, the chaff and the grain of wheat was separated so that the wheat was purified. And God is purifying. God is purifying David, this new king, to say, listen, you are not going to function with the, the choosing your, the lust of your flesh. Later we find out that David does do it differently. He does it according to the law of Moses. The Levites carry on poles the Ark of the Covenant. And scripture says in 1 Chronicles 15 verse 25 and 26 that God helped the Levites who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. God helped the Levites. God was present with them and they sacrificed bulls and rams as a result. They recognized God's presence. And it was a time of blessing. The ark returning and coming to Jerusalem as part of David's kingship, as part of God being central and being um, who, the God that they served. It was a time of blessing. But in the time of blessing, David was trying to choose his flesh and God stopped it. God stopped that and said, no, you will surrender to my commands and to my ways. Once again, once again, man, even a man after God's own heart, David, choosing his flesh and God confronting it. David also had problems with the lust of the eyes and the pride of life in his journey with the Lord as a king. We know that his story with Bathsheba was the lust of the eyes and God confronted David in that. 
with the pride of life when he, he asked for a census to be taken, which was an expression of his own pride. And God confronts the pride of life. In David's blessing, he had times, he had times when he chose himself and God disciplined him. Let me say this about our lives even as children of God, because I like to see us as children of God being like David who had that heart after God. That in our journey, as people who have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, do we surrender to the Lord when He is confronting areas of flesh in us? When He's confronting areas of the lust of the eyes? When He's confronting areas of the pride of life? in our own lives because in our journey we don't do it perfectly we are in process even in the blessing and the Lord loves to bless his children even in the blessings in the good times when things are going great there are the challenges that we have to say Lord I want to intentionally surrender to you in all areas of my life and never serve the blessings. Never get deceived by following the blessings. Letting the blessings take me away from your commands. Let the blessings take me away from uh, making you first in my life in everything that I do. That's the challenge of blessing. That's the challenge. We prayed, Lord, I want to be blessed. Lord, that you would bless me. But in those blessings, can you handle the challenge? Can you handle the challenge that you would not give in to the lust of your flesh, to yourself, making yourself number one, or the lust of the eyes, making the things you want, your will, your desire, the things of this world, number one. Even those things that seem innocent, it's not innocent if it's pulling you away from prioritizing Him as number one. Listen, serve Him in all faithfulness. That's what Joshua tells the, his, the people, the tribes, as they are taking their portion, as they're going into the, into the portion. He says, now serve Him with all faithfulness. Are you serving Him with all faithfulness? In the portion that he has given to you. You say, well, you know, I don't even have that much. Whatever. I hear that all the time. And I see and I know that you have way more than most of this world does. Many nations have a lot less than you do. Are you serving him with all faithfulness in the portion that he has given to you? Or are you doing what First John says? Are you running after the lust of your own flesh? The lust of your eyes? and your own pride. This is a challenge for us. It was a challenge for David, and he had a heart after God. It's a challenge for you and me, and we must choose to surrender our will and be intentional in making him first. God bless you. Pray about this word.